I thought they were very well made. I thought they were fun summer popcorn films. Mm -hmm. um, they certainly, the, the, the really great thing is they brought a lot of new people into the franchise that right. when they finished watching the film they said, okay, what's next? And they discovered there was a whole universe before these films were made and uh, we've been told by licensing and so forth that, it, that a lot of the people that came to see these feature films, which were gorgeous, um, really opened up a lot of new fans to the Star Trek universe, which is a wonderful thing. Right. Yeah. You, know, you have to understand that for um, both of us, going well before the 2009 film, we were uh, we were both big fans of J.J. Abrams. We used to watch Alias, Alias in the oh, art yeah. department. Big time fans. You know, of Alias. People, we'd record it, bring it in, watch in the art department. Yeah. Uh, you know, we. He's such a great storyteller. Brings such energy to his, to his productions. And then, of course, we're uh, big fans of Lost. Right. So. Abrams' job was to re-energize the show, to reinvent it. So, did he do things differently than we would have? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that said, he has a great team. They did a great job. Uh, it was know, sure pretty to look at. Yeah, we're, we're certainly jealous of the budget. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> when we made the feature films, when we were part of that thing, oh my gosh, it was not a lot of money. On Star Trek VI. Uh, our budget was so tight, most of the signs on the Enterprise, the little uh, little informational signs, wow. those were uh, colored sheets of paper that I stole from the production office and Xeroxed the art onto. So, we were really jealous of the budget that they had. How well do you feel that it honors the legacy of the original series? Like, I think they were incredibly clever in the way they constructed the reboot. That is, uh, by creating an alternate timeline, you're not discarding what came before. You're simply, uh, you're, you're simply setting a new course. So for that part, I really appreciate what they did. You know, again, would I have done things a little differently? Absolutely. Right. But you know, the, their job was to do it differently. I think it's also really important not to lose sight of what's what Star Trek is. And Star Trek isn't about lens flares and flashy ships and so forth and so on. It's about characters. It's about the philosophy of the universe. And um, I hope that going forward that is looked to more than it has been. But it's kind of fun to see a new twist and um, we hope they do well. We, we're, we're looking forward to the next film. Um, Remember back when uh, Star Trek The Next Generation started? There were a lot of fans who were fiercely resistive of a new starship and a, my god, a new captain and a new look and new uniforms and new phasers. And uh, the fans were understandably and very rightly skeptical. And it took a while for them to warm up to it. And, uh, and now today people can see, hey, we have Kirk, we have Picard, we have, uh, we have Cisco, we have Jane, we have Archer, and each one stands on its own. And now you have yet another universe that also stands on its own. What would be your hopes for the next Star Trek, a uh, new Star Trek television series? I mean, what would you like to see happen? Well, one of the jokes, one of, uh, one of the things that we like to joke about when, when you're doing something new, is when you do a new Star Trek, on one hand, you want it to be fresh. On the other hand, you want it to honor What's, what's been done before. It, it has to have that familiarity, but it has to surprise you. So we're, uh, what we're very fond of saying is uh, make it completely different, but exactly the same. And that's what Star Trek needs to be. It needs to be fresh. It needs to be new. It needs to break new ground. But it needs to be comfortably within the universe. How do you do, how do, you do both? That's the challenge as a filmmaker.